Hey boys and girls, I'm back. I took a couple days sabbatical to hang out with the fam and stuff like that. Um, stayed relatively sober too. Apart from the one evening that you're quite aware of where I decided to put on makeup and go celebrate my um, LBGT fans because they're awesome too. And if you're out there, lots of love to ya. Anyways, Minnesota. Minnesota it is today. And Minnesota is a really cool franchise that Chuck Fletcher has been putting together very differently, but very well. He he uh, he certainly thinks outside of the box. Initially, the first thing he does is pretty much the first thing, anyways. Before he even knows what he has for prospects, he goes out and grabs Suter and Parise for a boatload of money. I mean, talk about making a statement in your franchise saying, you know, we are not looking to rebuild for a very long time. We're going to believe in our kids. I'm going to believe in my drafting, the people that are drafting and the development team that I have. And I believe in my coach. Um, I think that says, I think he says that when he does that. And honestly, when he did it, I didn't think it was a good idea at all. Uh... Call me a little old school where I believe you should rebuild like you should rebuild. Bring in some veteran Jess, but throwing wads of money at veterans like that while you don't even know what you have for prospects seems a bit risky to me. But you know what? It actually paid off not too bad. Hasn't paid off in cups, but they have been making the playoffs. And what I did like about him, and, and he may be just a crazy genius. It might be the way to do it. He might have something there. Uh, he he puts he put a lot of trust in his people, and that's something you got to respect. Um, they have an incredible depth at the forward position. They don't have huge uh, superstars up front. Prize being closest. Miko Koivu has been used as a number one center for a long time now and probably shouldn't have been, actually. He's probably not what you would call a number one center, but he's a very solid center. He's like a poor man's Bergeron. Um, then they go in and bring uh, Stalin in, in this last summer. I'm kind of all over the place today because I've, I've got Pilates coming up. I'm so excited. <laughs> but they go in and they bring... Uh, Stalin, who has been a number one center, but it's questionable whether he still is or not. But one thing it did do is add a whole lot of depth um, up the middle uh, with uh, Charlie Coyle, who they've been playing in the center, and I like him in that position, but they also play him in wing as well. Excellent pickup, by the way. Picked up for San Jose for, I can't even remember who. If somebody remembers out there, please let me know. I think it was somebody significant. I think it was somebody significant, though, but uh, I can't remember who it was at the time. But excellent pickup. And that leads you down. I mean, they have Granlin. That was one of the guys they didn't really know what they had when they got him. And he's turned out to be a second line left winger that can play pretty smart hockey. Um, they have, uh, who else do they have as, as wingers out there? They got Niederreiter that they got from, from, the, from the New York Islanders there. That was an excellent pickup. Um, oh, what's his name that they got from Buffalo? Uh, it'll come to me, but all of these players are more or less second and third line players. There's not really high, any high impact first line players, but they have incredible depth all the way through their lineup. In fact, I would go as far as to say they might have the one of the best, or maybe even the best third fourth lines in the game. They have guys like Hala. Hala is a fantastic fourth line player if you play him on the fourth line but a really good third line player as well um they have uh zucker jason zucker who could play on most people's second line they have him playing on the third line and he can play he's a very underrated player as well he's not very physical but he's extremely smart and i want to give him some props too because that guy has worked his ass off to make it into the league he's not very big He's not, uh, he's had to take a lot of punishment and he takes a lot of punishment and he keeps on coming back. Guys like him are awesome in the room. People respect those guys a lot. He's probably never going to pick, pick up great points and he's going to take a lot of abuse, but he just keeps on coming back, coming back, coming back. And those guys are awesome to have. I would say, yeah, they're probably some of the, the best third, fourth line 
in the league right now. If you've got Charlie Coyle or Koivu as your third line center, you are doing extremely well. Um, defense wise, they have Scandella, uh, Brodine. Um, these are very unassuming guys. Their biggest star probably would be Suter, and he's not even really considered a huge superstar to most, but he is. He should be a Hall of Famer. He's the most unassuming superstar that there is, I think. He's just a fantastic defenseman. Um, giving him large amounts of money to come there was a smart move. Um, Brodeen is a, is, is a very underrated, very unassuming. That's kind of what their team is like. They're not, they're very unassuming people. They creep up on you. They're, they're a very unassuming team. They creep up on you. You think, oh, you know, well, they got some good players, but as a whole and as a unit and as individuals, their depth and everything is solid. And then you bring in a guy like Bruce Boudreau, and this is one thing that Chuck Fletcher has done very well. He brought in Yo to begin with, who is... Uh, an awesome coach who's going to be an awesome coach who took some lumps in Minnesota but did brought a lot of questionable teams to the playoffs every year uh, even without some goaltending and I think he's going to do fantastic in St. Louis but then when he goes out they bring in Boudreaux who is a, who's a genius of a coach absolutely brilliant coach he is probably a future Hall of Famer for sure, as long as he keeps on coaching, because he will have success everywhere he, everywhere he goes, and he has had success everywhere he, he he's been. Um, he hasn't got he didn't win the big one in Anaheim, but he brought him every single year to that point. I think they were crazy to get rid of him, absolutely nuts. Um, he picks up Dubnik for a second round pick. Dubnik, another guy who's another, uh, I, I hope he wins a Vesna because he's got the skill to do it, but he's another player that's pretty unassuming player. He's kind of cherry picked these guys that he might, uh, be, it's between, I think it's between Minnesota and San Jose is the all underrated team. <laughs> there, It's fantastic that they have all of those players like that. And maybe there was a point behind that. They didn't want the superstar. They wanted... Maybe he figured that that would create more of a team environment, and you might be right. Um, Minnesota fans, uh, you must get annoyed sometimes when they talk about uh, Detroit and hockey town, because if there is another hockey town, maybe even more of a hockey town, it's Minnesota. You guys are incredible for hockey. Um, you love your college hockey, and good on you for it. You show up. Fill a, fill a place. You fill college venues, I hear, even more than NHL venues. And I think that's awesome. That's grassroots stuff. And I hope that uh, the Floridas and, and uh, Arizonas and all of this take heed of this. And we see that in those markets as well because this is such an incredible game. I just want to see, so, I want to see more and more people enjoying it. Anyways, that is for sure 40. Actually, it's 40.5. I have to save a couple for Pilates here right now. I gotta save a couple percentages, sorry guys. But it was awesome uh, spending some time with you. Have a great day.